Howdy, you're here because you had a little oopsie. Or maybe your girlfriend or your mom did. Maybe you were backing out of the garage and forgot it was in park. Or there was one of those surprise light poles in the middle of a parking lot. Or maybe you ran over a deer. Or maybe you ran over a kid. This is a judgment-free zone, so I'm just going to show you how to replace the bumper on your Jeep KJ. Jeep Liberty, I think it's 2003 to 2007, all of those specifics right here. In my case, I had a master cylinder that failed, that guy right there. And so, slammed on the brakes, put pedal to the floor, and the ABS never even kicked in. Slid right into the back of a truck about three miles an hour, bent up the whole front end, I had a brush guard on there, and that saved my radiator, but it ate up the hood and everything. And then I procrastinated for about 16 months. And then a kid on a dirt bike ran into the side of me, so I figured if I'm gonna have to pull this whole side of the front of the car off to work on that, I might as well, you know, stop being lazy and do this bumper during a pandemic when everything's closed down and I can borrow my mom's car to go to work if I have to. This is a this is a fairly involved process, so if you've never worked on a car before, do not start here. Uh, you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, but if you're the sort of person who this looks like a piece of cake for you, uh, you don't need to be babied, so I'm not going to show you every single step. Uh, you can figure it out. Once you got your hood up, uh, you're going to want to pull the grill off. The grill's just held in by about six little clips up on top. Don't yank on them too hard because you will break them. You'll have to go to the scrapyard and you'll have to buy a different colored one like I did. Uh, you're going to have to pull off both of the indicator lights and then uh, unplug the light bulb from each of the side markers. Uh, and then you're going to have to pull the bumper off. Get the bumper off. Um, there's some screws holding it down there to the bottom of the radiator support. I think there's two screws over there holding it in. And then there are three clips each side, two different kinds on each side that you're gonna have to pull off of the inner fender. Uh, once you get that off, you can get in there and get the side marker light out. The bumper's gonna be also clipped in underneath your mounting panel up here at the top. Then you're gonna have to pull the bumper off and that's gonna take the energy absorber off with it. Uh, and then you're gonna to wanna to take the uh, mounting panel off after that. All right, I'm gonna show you how to take the mounting panel off in reverse. I'm currently putting it back on right now, but that allows me to show you all the, all the little holes and everything you gotta line up and put something in. Now, you don't have to take the headlights off, which is good, but you've got one screw to take out there. All of these are 10 millimeter, by the way. Uh, one right there, unless you've lost that clip. There's a little um, clip that goes over here that it threads into. Mine's in a bag over there at the moment. Got another screw right there. One more screw right there. These are screws. Uh, and then you've got one more there, and one more there. And then you also have to disconnect this harness right here. And this clips in right behind this. And there is a little plastic clip right there that goes in the center. Uh, you've got this connector that goes to your ambient air temperature sensor, which is that guy right there. So you got to unplug that. Uh, back down here, um, this on your indicator. Actually, I think that one goes into the in the bumper, but there's one more in here that clips into the mounting panel. I'll show you that in a second. And you've got these three plastic rivets over here and these three over here that go into these holes on this. So you gotta undo all those and then this should just lift up and do not pull straight up because you also have this little guy right down in here that is inside of the bumper and you'll snap that off. And it actually doesn't make a difference, but you know, just don't be an idiot. Don't do that. All right, so here are those two plastic clips I was talking about on this harness. That one right there goes into this hole from the back. And that guy right there goes into that little nubbins right there. You also need to disconnect your headlights. It's more of the same over here, although I think there may only be... Yeah, there's none right there. Actually, I don't think there's a plastic clip on this side. No, that one just goes right into the headlight. So it's just the headlight over there, two clips over there, and that headlight. Um, don't pull, you don't need to pull your bulb out, but if you can't get that little blue thing off, you can just pull your bulb out uh, and just leave that hanging, but you know, you'll probably shatter it. So try not to do that. But you know, if you got in front end collision, you might just be able to pull, just pull this off and drop it because everything's gonna be shattered anyway. You have to buy new stuff. Um, but I'd already replaced that, so this last accident didn't damage. It crushed the front corner of the bumper cover, but it didn't damage anything on the front, thank God. And then just take your indicator light and side marker and just chuck it up here in the engine bay. Uh, don't shut your hood uh, because you'll crush those. Also because the latch won't really work uh, once you unscrew that from the bumper. Yeah, now you can just get after that bumper now. Well, I've already done the hard part, as you can see. So I'm just going to go around and show you where all the spot welds and stuff are and then I'm going to try and show you uh, how to put everything back on. So there are a lot of tack welds on this thing. Um, 
I don't know what the hell Dahmer Chrysler was thinking, but uh, there are 46 tack welds holding this bumper on and six stick welds. I guess they they wanted this to be a structural component, but you know, it's not like it's a bumper or something which is designed to, you know, be replaced when you bump into things or anything like that. No, that's that's stupid. So each side is the same. There are three tech welds on the outside, five on the top here. There's two on the top of the cross member, three on the front of the cross member, five down here on the bottom of the cross member, and five more over here on the left of the cross member. Uh, these are a nightmare to get to. There's also two stick welds right here and another stick weld right here. Like I said, same stuff over there. So in order to get out these tack welds, you need one of these little 3 8 Harbor Freight tack weld driller specials. Uh, it's nice because it has a reversible bit so that when you shatter it like an idiot, you can turn it around and make the same mistake again. Which I managed not to do. I'm, I don't know how I got all these off with just one of these. And over here for the stick welds, I just came in here with a quarter inch grinder disc on an angle grinder and just hogged those out. Now the first 36 of these tack welds and the six stick welds are, you know, relatively a piece of cake. These five in here are a nightmare because you have to get them off of that plate, which is inside of the bumper. And if you hit something, there's no way you're getting anything inside of that bumper, which means you've got to take a die grinder or in my case, cutting wheel on angle, angle grinder, and slice that thing to pieces to get at that, to get that off with your Harbor Freight Special. As you can see on the new bumper, uh, there, isn't, there isn't one of those plates, you know, and I'm certainly not putting those back on because if I hit something hard enough that that causes a structural problem, um, the carver's gonna be totaled anyway. Uh, the bumper, bumper didn't have any effect in there. That's the last of my concern. It'll just... So yeah, so that's what you gotta do. You just gotta cut this thing into a bunch of pieces and get after it. Uh, what I did is I came in here and I cut a plate right off the front. This is the top. So I just cut a little plate out so I could get the angle grinder in there. And then this is right here. And then I just cut that off. And then this was still attached to the cross member and then I was able to drill those out and knock that off. Once you drill out those tack welds, uh, you can just get a, an old beater screwdriver and a hammer and just beat it underneath the sheet metal and break them free. Uh, and don't go all the way through with these because uh, you won't have anything to drill or weld into when you get through. Also, make sure to remember that when you're cutting this out and drilling out all these welds and all that, do it barefoot like I did. It builds character. Once you start trying to pull the bumper off, uh, there's really only two things that are directly connected to the bumper that you didn't already have to take off just to get to it. Um, I guess there's three. Uh, the first is this bracket that holds the hood latch. You have to pull those two screws out. That's easy. And down here, the windshield wiper fluid tank. There's one bolt right there that holds that into the bumper. Uh, just the stuff that screw up there so I didn't lose it. And you also have this brake line going over here to the passenger brake and that is held in with these two clips that are pressed into the bumper. And that one's broken and that one doesn't want to stay in the hole so we'll just ignore them but uh, what you do is you just press on these and they come off the brake line. And they should stay in the bumper and then when you have the bumper off you can pull them out or buy new ones. A uh, fourth thing that's attached to the bumper is the this little um, cover for the cross member that goes right here. It's got a little, little crumple piece, looks like a square cup and that slides in there and then screws into there. There's one of those on each side. All right, once you got the old bumper off, um, I didn't even have to grind down any of the welds. It just slid right on. Um, that easy. If you want to be fancy, you can grind down them welds. Uh, but I'm not fancy because this Jeep isn't fancy. Now, if you've got a welder, stick or tack, whatever, whatever your choice, you can just weld this sucker back on. But um, I'm not going to do that. Uh, one, because I don't have a welder. Two, I don't know how to weld. And three, if I ever run into anything else with this, I want to be able to pull this off uh, without having to grind or drill any more of my cross member or, you know, fender flares and stuff out or inner outer fender. So instead, I'm going to try and put this back on with some nice big fat self-tapping screws that hopefully have flat heads that will just go right on in. And I don't think other than the bumper, there's anything that's going to have a clearance issue. 
So I should just be able to put all of those in, slide the bumper back on, no one will ever see it. And if I ever run over a deer or a child, I can just pull them screws out and replace it. And first things first, once you slide that back in, before you get to any welding or anything like that, um, make sure you have your brake line clips in, put them back in, clip the brake line back in. Make sure it's not like this one, rubbing up against shit. And then come down over here, take your handily stored washer fluid thingy and put it back in. Um, I gotta find where the hole is. I think it's like right over here. All right, windshield wiper thingy screwed back in. Um, I don't know where these hoses are supposed to run normally, but uh, we'll figure it out. Well, I'm gonna run to the hardware store and try not to catch coronavirus while I'm buying some self-tapping uh, screws because I bought some that I thought were self-tapping sheet metal screws, but they're for like going through soda cans and into plywood. And I broke two off in there and then I broke a third one off, but I broke it off high enough that I could back it out. Uh, so make sure you get some good ones. We can get some big fat ones. This is a structural thing anyway, so it's probably for the better. Some might say I'm putting lipstick on a pig, but that implies that I don't have the resolve to kiss that pig. I've been Frenching this swine for at least five years. This is more like mouthwash on a hog. I don't need any convincing to get me to kiss it, but you know, I'd rather not throw up in my mouth while I'm putting my tongue down its throat. All right, there we are. Got her in with self tappers. Look at that action. Mint. So, that was um, slightly harder than expected. Broke two drill bits and an impact bit, but got them in there. I've got 11 on each side. Two on the outside, just because one of them stripped, so I put in a second one. Three there, two on the top, one on the front, and three on the bottom. I just ran one right through that, um, ran these two on the top through the old welds, that one through the old weld. Uh, those welds uh, got a bit heat tempered from the die grinder, so they were a little pain. And I ran two of these through new holes and one of these through, I guess that's a drain hole or a stick weld hole or something, I don't know what it's what it's for, but I just ran one through it, and if I need to take it out, I can take it out, no problem. Uh, and I think that's plenty. Uh, these are screws I used. Picked these up from Tractor Supply, uh, 10 by 24. They're fine thread, uh, look to be galvanized. Yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, I drilled a 1 8 inch pilot hole, and just ran that down there, and they just flew on in with that impact gun. Uh, don't use Harbor Freight impact bits because I munged one of those on the first try and then I sheared off That screw right there trying to use that munged up one. So yeah, I don't know I don't know what brand that one is but found it on the side of the road somewhere. It's pretty good good steel. Uh, I already went and put the uh, Latch holder back in. It's just two screws and as you saw I got the brake line in and I got the windshield wiper fluid in um, I don't know what hole that's in there's another hole right here and I think it's supposed to go in, but it doesn't get that close. And there's like this weird diagonal cut thing that I think was just a relief cut when they were shaping this. And I ran into that and it's it's not particularly snug. So I think I think I might redrill that at some point, but that's just something to be aware of. Uh, now we're going to put these guys back on. So I think these are little, these are little bumpy things for the cross member so that if you hit something, the impact gets put right into the frame. Doesn't just crush the bumper. So we're gonna put those back on. Would have liked to have put another screw right here, but you know, it's not really doing much. It's just keeping it from pulling off. All right, neighbor's mowing now, so you're gonna have to deal with that. Um, so I went and marked out the hole to drill a spot for this little doohickey down here in the mounting panel to go. That thing's about a little less than half an inch wide. And I just sort of marked it where I wanted it. This is about one and three quarter of an inch straight down right in the center, more or less. And I'm just going to go after it with this three quarter inch hole saw. That doesn't need to be precise, it's just there to keep stuff from rattling, I think. Alright, well she went in just fine, and it looks like all of my holes line up, everything else clearances. So I'm work on getting that harness back in. Alright, got the mounting panel back in. So the next part in reassembly is putting back on the bumper. but. I need to go take this thing and put it back together with some zip ties because that whole corner over there is all smashed up because uh, I uh, ran over a kid on a dirt bike. Um, kid's fine, dirt bike's not. People live. But yeah, I'm going to do that. And then put the bumper back on and once the bumper's back on then I can put the side markers back in and then I can put the indicator lights back on 
and then the grill will go back in and then she'll be ready to go. But first, I'm gonna test to make sure that the hood latches because I just went and put the mounting panel back on. So hopefully it does. Nice. Hmm. It's not locking solidly though, so we're gonna have to beat on that a little bit. Never mind, I was just a wuss, I didn't hit it hard enough. That's gonna be, that's, that's right pretty there. Minty. I can't do a Canadian accent. Look at that. See the magnetic field lines in the little bits of metal shavings stuck to the end of this long boy impact extender. It's pretty cool. Isn't that just beautiful? Good as new. You know, you can't even notice that I ran into a motorcycle. Not at all. Beautiful. Now this swine is back together. I haven't put the grill on yet. Got it over there. A uh, little rubber doohickeys that uh, keep it from chattering over there on the corners fell off, so I'm putting them back on with caulk. Uh, spray adhesive didn't work. Missed another crack over there I had to zip tie up, but she all went back together. Um, to put the bumper back on, uh, you've got these two push-in rivets that you need to put back in and you've got one little one-time use push rivet you need to put in and you also have this one bolt right here and then you've got these four clips that slide under here don't slide it underneath the mounting panel like an idiot like I just did um, yeah same on the other side and then you just put your indicator lights on you slide them into that little groove over there and then put that back on and you don't have to take off your side markers but I had to because mine's a little bit broke. All right, so my work's not done, but your bumper's replaced. That'll work. What the hell are you doing in my birdhouse, you little fucking flying rats? You are not a wren.